Hi there! What I've got for you today is a video on magnets. So we're just going to go over some conceptual stuff about magnets, which you already know a bunch of. And we're going to go over in particular how to draw a magnetic field around a magnet or something else that creates a magnetic field. So you do know a lot about magnets. There's a north end, there's a south end. They will attract. If you have a north and a south, they attract. If you have a north and a north, they repel. You might be thinking that this is a lot like charges. Positive and positive repel, positive, negative, attract. Kind of the same, but not quite. So the first thing I want you to remember is that a magnet, magnets, those aren't the same as charges. So we can't say that a magnet and a positive charge would attract or repel because they're totally different things. Yet, they have a lot of similarities, so you need to be careful. It's like, well, yeah, likes repel, opposites attract. That's still true, but it's only true for that same thing, like charges, magnets. There's a big wall between them. So just keep that in mind. Magnets, charges, totally different. Now, as I mentioned, you know that magnets have a north and a south pole. North and north will repel. North and south will uh, attract. <laughs> and if we were to take a standard bar magnet, where we just have a bar and there's a north pole and a south pole, we can talk about the magnetic field around this magnet. There are a lot of different things in physics that have fields. We haven't talked about a lot of them but there's a gravitational field, there is an electric field, there's a magnetic field. And what a field is, is it's just kind of this imaginary map of what would happen if we put a special object in this place. So a gravitational field, if we had a big object like the Earth, and we put a little object with a mass here, they have a gravitational attractive force. And we could draw at every step, okay, well, it's attracted. If we put the M here, M here, in this case, it's attracted everywhere. And if we put the M, like, way out here, there's a smaller attraction. So that would be kind of a gravitational field where you just draw all these vectors. Imagine, if I put a mass here, what would happen to that mass? Similarly, an electric field, if we take a positive charge, and I imagine, okay, I'm going to take another positive charge and put it here. What does this feel? Well, this would be repelled away. And so if I put it here, it would be a big repel. If I put it way out here, you know, it would be a smaller repel. Over here, it would be repelled. Whereas with a negative charge, the field around a negative charge, what would that look like? Well, a positive next to a negative, it would be attracted. And if it's farther away, there's less of an attraction. So if we were to just imagine drawing these vectors all around an area, around an object, whether it's a massive object, an electrical object, or a magnetic object, that picture of vectors is a field. So it's just a map of what would happen around an object, a mass, a charge, or a magnet. So that's really what a field is. So what would happen to a little magnet, let's say a compass, if we brought it close to this uh, bar magnet right here. Well, so we have a compass and here it would have a strong push away, here it would have a strong attraction, let's make those bigger. Here, I don't know, would it do anything? I don't know. <laughs> and um, here it would be strong away, here it would be a little bit weaker, pushing away. Here, oh, that's way too big. Let's try that. <laughs> Let's try that. And so farther away, we'd have a weaker attraction. And so what we can build up is this idea of a magnetic field. And we can do it as a bunch of vectors, which is what I was kind of building up here. But if you do a bunch of those vectors, what you can do is combine them as uh, into lines. So you can do magnetic field vectors like this, or you can do magnetic field lines. And for what we're going to be doing, I'm going to count both as okay, whichever one makes more sense to you. There's a little bit different rules for um, which one you want to draw. So the field, magnetic field, 
um, <laughs> I gotta start this over. The magnetic field is given a label B and when we're drawing lines, the lines always go from north to south. And you can see that's what's happening. We'd have the compass being pushed away, we'd have the compass being attracted in. And so we can build up, if you just imagine what's happening at every step, um, I can go around. We can build up these lines. And we always have to say which, which direction those lines point. Because if I didn't do this arrow, I wouldn't know if things were going this way or this way. From north to south. We have another line that's doing this. From north to south. And there's another line that would go like this, like this. Ooh, and so we can just keep drawing lines. Make sure we give them our arrows. Oops. From north to south. Yep, they're all down. Okay. And so you can draw the magnetic field lines like this and just show with the arrows. And it doesn't, you don't actually have to see all of them because we can imagine what would be happening all the way out here. So did I, oh, I need to get arrows on this. Can't forget the arrows. And so this is the example of a magnetic field, the lines of magnetic field around a simple bar magnet, north on top, south on bottom. And these field lines represent, if I put a little compass here, little tiny magnet, what's going to happen to that magnet? It's going to orient like this. And so that's the basis of fields, a field line. So it's just this idea of what would happen at any point. Oop. So they go from north to south, and uh, closer together means they, the field is stronger. So when we have field lines that are really close together, well, you can see that I have a whole bunch of lines right here. I have a whole bunch of lines right here close together. If they're close together, I have a very strong magnetic field. That should make sense from what you know about magnets. The magnetic force, the force of attraction or repulsion, is stronger the closer you get. So close up, we have a lot of lines in a small space, strong. Out here, we have very few lines in the space. It's going to be a weaker field. So the two things you got to remember if you're drawing field lines is that they go from north to south and that the closer the lines are together, the stronger the field is. If you want to do vectors, well, they're still going to point from north to south, but in order to do stronger, we do what we've often done with vectors, which is a longer vector means a stronger force. So we could do that too. All right, so here's one example of how we could get magnetic field lines from what we call a permanent magnet. We can get magnetic fields from other situations as well. And one of the coolest ways to get a magnetic field is to run a current through a wire. And I know I said just like five minutes ago, magnets do not equal charges. And they don't. But one of the most awesome things about physics that we've discovered in the last couple hundred years is that moving charges cause magnetic fields. So if we have charges that are moving, they will create magnetic field. Moving charges create magnetic fields. And this is just, it's amazing. And we're going to see all the, the amazing things that come out of this whole idea. Generators and um, motors and all sorts of cool stuff. So moving charges create magnetic fields. So if I have a bar magnet, like this, north and south, and I put a positive here, if it's just sitting there, this positive feels nothing because it's not a magnet. <laughs> and this is not positives or negatives. So just having this here wouldn't have any effect. However, if this thing were moving, now if we give it some velocity, then this moving charge creates a magnetic field, and then we'd have an interaction. All right, so let's take the simplest case we can work with. We are going to have, well, moving charges. Okay, what's a moving charge? Well, all right, that sounds like a current. So current is a bunch of charges moving in a wire. So let's just take a simple wire, 
and figure out what the magnetic field is around it. And it, as usual, there's a couple rules about how we think about things, just so we're all consistent. You know, I don't want to be doing things in metric while my counterpart is doing things in British Imperial, which is why one of the Mars rovers crashed. So, yeah, we want to make sure we're communicating consistently. So I'm going to say that we have a current-carrying wire, and it's going up. The current in this wire is going up. So there's a wire, so just a copper wire going straight up, and the current's flowing upwards. If you were to take a big tray and put it around this current carrying wire, so a flat tray, you know, I can't draw very well, sorry. We take a flat tray and we put a whole bunch of little compasses, so little compasses, which tell us the direction of the magnetic field. So if there's no current, then, oops, they would all be pointing north like compasses do. So when there's no current, let me make sure this is consistent. Okay. So if the current is zero, all of these would just point north. However, however, if we do have a current, and let's say it points up, and we do the same process where we take a bunch of compasses and put it around that wire, the coolest thing happens. You will see that the compasses all point in a circle. And so those compasses now are going to be pointing like this, in a circle around the current carrying wire. So we've got this circle of magnetic fields. But it's only true when there's a current. If there's no current, there's no created magnetic field, everything points north. All the compasses point north. If we do run a current through this wire, all of a sudden, boom, there is a magnetic field. And that, it's just so cool. I love this. So let's do the interesting case, and it's not the boring one here. We have some rules about how this field behaves. And you can imagine that it's going to depend on how much current is running through the wire and how far away we are from the wire. So you probably have that already. In terms of direction, we have something called the right-hand rule. Right hand rule. And if you are left handed, I don't know, you'll have to do something <laughs> because you're going to want to use your left hand for this. It's the right hand rule. So the right hand rule, you put your thumb in the direction and your right thumb in the direction of the current, of the current, and then curl your fingers. Oh, squeaky marker, sorry. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> Curl your fingers, and then your fingertips point in the direction of B. So point in the direction of B, the magnetic field. All right. So if, uh, an example is right here. Put your thumb in the direction of right thumb in the direction of the current and curl your fingers. Your fingertips are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. So if this is my wire, then the magnetic field is going to be going like this. At this point, right out here, points that way, curl here, it points this way, curl, points here, and then curl that way. So the right-hand rule for figuring out the magnetic field from a current carrying wire, put your thumb in the direction of the current, curl your fingers, your fingertips point in the direction of the magnetic field. So that's one of the right-hand rules we have in physics. There's a bunch of them. Uh, this is the one we're starting off with. We can also talk about the direction when we have something a little more interesting. It's kind of hard to, you know, interpret this. Because it's like, well, okay, for one, my drawing skills aren't great. And two, let's figure out what it looks like in an easier situation. 
how about if I go like this? So now I have a current going this way. And I want to know what the field is here and here. Follow our right hand rule. The right thumb points in the direction of the current. Curl your fingers. Your fingertips point in the direction of B. So it's going like this around the wire. How do we represent that? We have two rules for what we call into the page and out of the page. So this, if you just put a dot, that means that the field vector is pointing out of the page. It's coming at you. An X is going into the page. And the way I was taught it and the way I remember it is think of an arrow. So if we have an arrow, I'll draw a side view of an arrow. So if the arrow's coming at you, what do you see? The tip. You see just the tip of the arrow. If the arrow is going away from you, what do you see? You see the feathers. So that's how I learned these two uh, convention rules, is the tip of the arrow, the feathers of the arrow. And so that's how we're going to demonstrate, show what the field is here. Okay, right thumb in the direction of the current. Above the wire, my fingers are pointing out of the page. And now I don't know if this is going to work in the learning glass with the flip. I sure hope it is. So right hand out of the page, which means up here we have the dots, which mean the B field is out of the page. And below the wire, it's going into the page. So we would have the X's going into the page. So it, it tells us that it's kind of doing this around the wire. And I'm going to put them evenly spaced because it's going to be even at the same distance. If these are all the same distance from the wire, they should all be the same size. And again, same distance from wire, these should all be the same size. So I'm going to make them evenly spaced. All right, so let's do a couple examples. So I will want you to be able to draw the magnetic field for different situations. And you should be able to use these rules now and the convention there in order to show me what you know. And remember that it's always about showing me you understand. It's not about getting the right answer. If you want to pass these things, you have to show me that you understand what you're doing. So a minor mistake, depending upon what kind of mistake it is, a minor mistake could get you a pass if it's just the right kind of mistake. You know, a minor math mistake, but your physics is good, I'll probably let it slide. But if you have a physics mistake, even if it's small, you're probably not going to get a pass. Okay, Ooh, come on. So let's predict what the magnetic field lines would look like around a magnet, but instead of north-south, I'm going to have a side-by-side -side magnet. And let's do north here. North and south. So at this point, you should be able to predict what the field lines would look like. So I'm going to draw field lines. You can do vectors too if you want. For me, I'm going to do lines. Take a moment, hit pause if you need to, and predict what you think the field lines would look like for this side-by-side -side magnet. Okay, hit pause. Did you hit pause? Did you predict? Hope so. So let's do it. We always have field lines going from north to south, so they're going to want to go bloop, like that. From north to south. So we're going to have field lines doing this. And they're going to go whoosh. And then bigger ones and bigger ones and bigger ones, each of them pointing this way. Uh, well, I'm not very good at drawing this symmetric. So something like this. So going in, 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 because we're going into the south. And we come out of the north. Well, yeah, I guess so long as I have the arrows there, I might do them here too, just to remind myself. So that would be what the field lines would look like around this kind of weird side-by-side -side magnet. Again, the closer, it's a little hard to tell this, but the closer together should be the stronger. So here's the first one, and let's try another one. Let's try a horseshoe magnet. So the old, 
oldest styles of magnets that were convenient had a north pole and a south pole like this. We call it a horseshoe magnet because it looks like a horseshoe. So what do you think the field lines would look like for this one? And again, predict, give it a try, hit pause if you need to. So what do we get here? Well, we want to go from north to south. Bloop. Okay, so these are going to be probably pretty straight and something like that. And then we're going to start getting whoosh, bigger and bigger and bigger, something like this. And I'm not going to be looking for perfection. I, I'm going to be looking for, again, do you get the main idea? That they go from north to south and that these are closely spaced, so it's strong close. These are a little bit more widely spaced, so it's a little weaker right there. Um, and one more. Let's see if we can predict one more. What do you think we would have if... Oh, I want to make sure I get these right. Let's say we have a current going into the page here, and then we have a current going out of the page here. So we have two current carrying wires. One, we have a wire like this, and the current's going that way. And then the other, we have a wire like this, and the current's going this way. Can you predict what the field lines would look like in this situation? I'm going to give myself some room. North to south and right hand rule. So see if you can use those to get the right answer. All right, so the right hand rule, let's just take them one at a time. Put your right thumb in the direction of the current. Curl your fingers. All right, so for this one, the field is going around like this. Whoosh. All right, so we've got a field, and it's going to be getting, eh, I can't draw this very well, getting farther away, more widely spaced as we get out, <laughs> and then curling like this. So I'm going like that, like that, like that. And so just give me a couple arrows so I, so I show so I know which way is going. Now let's do this one. This is a wire going this way and the current's going this way. Right thumb in the direction of the current. Curl around. So here we've got again the same thing. It's gonna be they're close together when they're close to the wire, and then we're gonna get eh. okay. Yeah. You get the idea, I hope. So here, boom, boom, it's going this way. So down, up, down, and up, down, and up, and down. All right, so here are two different magnetic fields. They will add or subtract as vectors. They are vectors. So in the middle here, they have, they're both going downwards. So over on this side, it's just going to be mostly this one because this one's going the the field from the right hand wire is going to be very weak, and way over here the field from this one weak. So from the outsides, just like that. And again, too too far up, too far down, we're not going to care. What would we do in the middle? Well, they're going in the same direction, so those fields are going to add, which means that I can just say they're stronger in the middle. How should I say they're stronger? The fields are closer together. And I almost have that here because they're closely spaced, closely spaced. They're a little bit more widely spaced, but maybe if I just add, you know, one or two more lines, kind of giving that idea. Again, don't forget the direction just to say, okay, this is going to be strong again because we have two fields adding together here. So something like this, a uh, rough idea, that would work as well. So there are a couple examples of how to draw magnetic fields for permanent magnets and for the magne magnetic field due to a current carrying wire. That one's hard to say. And this is the kind of thing that I'll be asking you to do on an assessment, is be able to draw the field. So if I give you this situation, the situation, something else random, can you draw the, current, the magnetic fields correctly? So keep in mind, field lines go from north to south and closer is stronger. Or if you use vectors, longer is stronger. And then we have our right hand rule for the current carrying wire. Put your right thumb in the direction of the current and curl your fingers. The fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. And that's as 
easy as that is. So I hope that makes sense. Good job.